playing cards first of our story are several ones. Among them, the most controversial one is Brutus. We get a lot of information about Lucius Junius Brutus from Plutarch's lives. The villain's son, as both Apollo's priest and later Shakespeare let us know, was more of an instrument than a real plotter of Caesar's murder. He is said to have been quite interested and learned on philosophy and an efficient government of Cisalpine Gaul. He was also said to be a heavy thinker and quite an honest citizen, whose reputation was skillfully handled to legitimate Caesar's murder. Not only this, but also his ancestry for Lucius Junius Brutus, the one who had beaten down the Tarquins, Rome's last royal lineage, almost 400 years before. These features explain his speeches in the Shakespearean play, full of comparisons and metaphors. Brutus is more of an orator than of a cunning, ambitious man. Issues. What we know about Brutus' brother-in-law comes to us through Brutus' biography by Plutarch. Asius is described not only as a ruthless, ambitious man, cunning and manipulating. Like Brutus, he had been the recipient of Caesar's consideration by being granted a praetorship. But he had, but he had also witnessed Caesar's weakness on the battlefield and felt furious that the Senate could have gifted the dictator privileges suitable to a king such as giving him a golden seat, proclaiming Caesar's birthday as a special celebration in Rome, granting him the right of having a crown of precious gems to be displayed at ceremonies, and many other tokens of privilege that had upset other noble women such as Caesar, who wouldn't admit that such a frail man, since he had witnessed Caesar's symptoms of weakness and epilepsy, besides, perhaps, his terrified his terrified outburst just before Tapsus battle when he threw off all his breastplates and helmet and ran against the enemy with the sole help of his soul. That was a mere excuse to try to justify his envy, his envy and uh, the fact that Rome couldn't be ruled by a monarch, a fact that was shared by many Romans who were very influenced by the optimate view of Rome and feared all good Republican values could be smashed by the dictator, who did not seem to follow Salah's path. Salah, Salah's path, and Salah, who had left office in a few years, something that didn't seem to be likely of Caesar.
Antonius. Antonius is, on the one hand, evaluated by Caesar as quite an opposite character to Cassius. Unlike Brutus in Trigon, brotherly law, he loves feasting, wild amusement, and listening to music. According to Caesar, he seems not to be a reflexive man. However, this does seem to be an obstacle for a person who proves to be quite of a demagogue. No doubt he so due to his attempt to crown Caesar. Furthermore, his written sources tell us about these extravagant likes, such as having all kinds of entertainers and prostitutes round, just quite much of a circus-like atmosphere wherever he might move. It is also known of Antonius that he was a, cool, a close friend of Publius Clodius and his family, all of them a group of what were the members of aristocracy at that time, frivolous caps who only thought of luxury and lavishing amusements, devoted to astonishing meals and seasons at fashionable resorts like Bay, whose magnificent remnants can be discovered Two photos nowadays. He would finally even marry Fulvia, Claudius' widow, Claudius widow, quite an ambitious and intelligent lady who had little in common with many match. All these aspects of his private life envision help us to envision the the background of his speech. The background of his speech in front of Caesar's broken body. 